Hey there, cats and kitties. I am the Blues Man, Johnny Blues, and this is going to be a brief little review for Sword Art Online, episode 23. Not a whole heck of a lot to say with this particular episode. There were some exciting elements, but mainly we're picking up right where we left off, right from that big penultimate confrontation between Sugu and Kirito. And, of course, you know, I was happy to see that he just wanted to get back to the game. You know, something surprised me about this episode, his dialogue where he says, you know, he's still very much a part of SAO and it's still very much a part of him. It didn't seem that way to me for the longest time since the ALO arc began. I mean, there are definitely certain elements we've seen, you know, in battles and stuff like that, where it calls back to his time in SAO. Even that duel we see briefly referenced in this episode between he and Sugu in the outside world, where he kind of took on the stance of a fighter and everything, things that carried over from SAO. But he even brings it one step further in saying, you know, I really don't know how to relate to you, Sugu, because I wanted to bridge that gap between us, and in doing so, you know, I was still thinking about this game, still thinking about Asuna, and until I reach her, I really can't deal with the outside world as yet. So I found that really fascinating, and I liked that their sort of confrontational experience passed relatively quickly. They kind of had a sky dance, if you will, where they were going to duel each other, and they both decided to give in to one another, and they caught each other in midair. Their swords went clamoring down to the ground and everything like that and I thought this was a really beautiful moment because in a sense symbolically as well as physically in this virtual world as ironic as that sounds they did come back together they did understand each other a little better and I can see they're on the road to recovery as far as their relationship goes as family and friends as well and then you had recon little recon being in this episode showing that he is just as kick-ass at least in spirit as Carito is I was really impressed by this little cat as little as we've seen of him he has impressed me i was glad that he cropped up again which was one of my predictions actually in going into this episode although i don't think i actually voiced that in my last review but i basically had it in mind as a sort of secondary love interest if you will romantic interest this guy would be who takes up the slack for Kirito in sugu's life because essentially he shows up in the op and why we haven't seen him hardly at all maybe two three times at the most i knew he had to imagine to something and here we have it you know basically he let his feelings for Sugu be known and I'm sure she's going to learn to feel the same way about him maybe not exactly she's going to be the one wearing the pants in the relationship that's to be sure but I do like that she has somebody to fall back on that actually does appreciate her for who she is which is basically kind of what she's been looking for and then of course we get them teaming up together to go back into the world tree and try that internal climb into the abyss of this tree with all these creatures Creatures respawning and respawning. They all make a grand effort of fighting these things, and in fact, Recon shows how far he's willing to go. I don't think it's just to impress Sugu, but it's also to try to win the day for her. He basically uses this self-sacrificing move, which explodes everything in the area, and I thought that was pretty cool looking. But it's ineffective, and it looks like they're going to lose once again. And of course, just in the nick of time, another prediction I actually had last Last week, after last week's episode, was the cavalry arrived in the form of the Sylphs and the Kate Sith. They gave it a gallant effort. They got Carito through the roof, and then he finds himself in another room, which has all of these creatures spawning and respawning once again. And I'm just like, okay, this is going to go on forever, isn't it? I was pretty sure he was going to get killed, whacked right there, but then I remembered just as he did, he had that key card. He called out Yui Shi. He accessed it, and boom, cliffhanger! And I was so peeved at that because it's like, you're toying with me after showing this grand explosive, like, flying through the air, explosive wisps of energy just in all multicolors coming off Kirito as he's flying up, strafing up to this rooftop, and then he gets through, and it all comes to a dead halt, and boom, when he gets in that last door, nothing. We have end credit roll. So I 
can't wait to see what's going to happen in the next episode. I was a bit peeved that we didn't get any kind of hint by the end of this one. But I am still really anticipating the next one. I hope he is able to save Asuna, or at the very least gets to see her again, before perchance running into the big bad boss Oberon, which I bet is what's coming next. So, yep, that's pretty much going to be it for me on this episode. I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments below what you thought of it. Is this still staying true to the light novel? I always want to know that with every single episode. And otherwise, that's going to be it for me. So I hope you're all doing well, and I'll catch you all later. Peace.